Hello everybody, welcome back. Today is April 5th and we're doing robot and nonsense stories to end your week. And let's start out with Amazon who are throwing around a lot of money. Recently they're doing their new servers, their new uh, data centers and everything. They're shrinking the real estate. But they are throwing a big number at AI. Amazon spends $2.75 billion on AI startup Anthropic in its largest venture investment yet. Anthropic uh, makes Claude, and you should definitely check out and play with Claude. Claude dropped a new update last week, and it is very good. Surprisingly good. But it is another subscription centralized AI. And it's a lot not of open, people, no. A lot of people are saying... Uh, Maybe that's not what we need. Maybe that will lead to kind of what we have with our other tech companies, right? Maybe we should try to get around this and not have that. <laughs> Stability AI CEO resigns because you're not going to beat centralized AI with yet more centralized AI. You can only put so many GPUs in the data center before the power grid collapses. Decentralized AI. I really do think more work is needed for decentralized training. Like we really do. Uh, Google had a paper that was reasonably okay on decentralized training of AIs that's what we need we need a we need a, an AI coin that's not more work to check the work of the blockchain than the work in the first place you got to respect a man who walks away from what was probably a lot of money though. yeah and AI being stuffed into more and more things is the trend github's new AI powered tool auto fixes vulnerabilities in your code Basically looking over your code, it's like <laughs> this code is terrible. What We're is not wrong doing with that. You? No, get rid of it. That's a whole new thing to have imposter syndrome about. It's like I'm not even better than the AI. <laughs> <laughs> just more ways to have your self esteem just tank. Well, not only, I mean, if we're not better than the AI for a job that requires a lot of technical knowledge, what about one that's just all about your natural human abilities? <laughs> Video game voice actors are poised to strike as they battle AI for their jobs. Because there's a lot of AI voices you can just download out there that aren't based on any one person's voice. But and we're trained on many of these voice actors' voices. And they get cadence right and inflection, and it's just, it's amazing. The indie game scene is really embracing this. And it's still a little soulless, but you can tell that we're almost there. So, I would be concerned if I were a voice actor. We just need to teach the AI to be, to have uh, the level of... Uh, pizzazz as robin williams puts into all of his voices and characters and then we're, we're there if all the characters are like that that would be a nightmare <laughs> <laughs> all genie all the time <laughs> I, I mean not just genie but also mork from mork and mindy and I mean, he really only had one gear mrs yeah. <laughs> mrs doubtfire i don't know he had, he had, he had range games. but yeah although remember he did that uh, movie where he was the serial killer yeah it was actually pretty good yeah. i don't remember what it was called now, I'll juxtapose this headline with uh, two, three years ago when we were assured the exact opposite by the same people. They did the studies three years apart and they were like, I feel like oh. we say this every week where it's yeah. like, oh, they said this was not the case. And yet. AI apocalypse could take away almost 8 million jobs in the UK, says this That report. seems low. <laughs> that does seem low. Does that mean that we're going to have a lot more people to work on infrastructure and building and civic work projects? Because that wouldn't necessarily be terrible. Is yeah, just learn to code. <laughs> they say women will be more effective, but I don't understand why that would be. Mm. Like, they're more likely to keep their jobs or more likely to... No, more to... likely to lose their jobs. Huh. And here are some people that are definitely, already, have lost their job to AI. World Poker Tour bets on AI dubbing of tournaments for Latin America. Basically, we don't need to hire a translator, we're just going to let AI deal with it. Well, that's translator and voice, because they're dubbing. So... Two jobs, possibly. That's, that's one of the things the Rabbit AI pin does in, that, in their demo video was working really well if it wasn't faked. Something tells me that they would not allow you to have the Rabbit AI pin in a poker tournament. <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. I don't know why. <laughs> and more and more companies shamelessly replace their advertising departments with AI. And every time they get caught, people are furious. BBC will stop using AI for Doctor Who promotion after receiving complaints. This is apparently an AI-generated email. Was that was was uh, did I... Yeah. And I don't know how people could tell. Hmm. It must have been really robotic in the language. Delivery, yeah. I don't even. I don't. Robotic is not the right, right way to describe, because some of the AI stuff is like, let's talk about this thing, and and it starts in, injecting all sorts of superlatives that don't make any sense. Per my last update, Doctor Who rules. <laughs> 
<laughs> Doctor Who with the magnanimous TARDIS. And it's like... Mm. That's not the, what that word means. And robots, physical robots, are still out there. And they're also looking to take some jobs. But Built wants to lower the cost of home building with robots. So basically, this is not what you think. This is just a factory that makes the walls. That's all they do. That's more jobs though, right? Uh, what's really crazy though, the TechCrunch article fails to talk about, is in some jurisdictions, that's considered a manufactured home. Mm-hmm. So a lot of neighborhoods are like, no, no manufactured homes allowed in this area, which was meant to apply to like a trailer or a mobile home, RV type, like the big bus style RVs. But they actually got it to include homes that are manufactured like assembly line manufacturing, like... Not quite a Sears kit home, but you could actually, like that was a, a, a big thing in some places. You could order a house and it was like, here's the walls, here's the roof, here's the thing. Some assembly required, bolt it together on site and you're good to go. And I think that's a reasonable solution for a housing crisis. Yeah, I think there's probably the home builders had a, a powerful lobby yes. to stop that. Yeah. A lot of those those types of homes are really expensive too, though. Because I looked into that briefly and was like, oh, I can't afford these. But this is not. This might not be what you're thinking of. This is still like constructed. Yeah. It's just that they're doing the like putting the pieces together for the framing beforehand. Yeah, yeah that's so, what I'm talking about. Even those houses are usually really expensive. Really? Yeah. Because they say that those robots are four cents per minute to run, and they can do the whole. Yeah, process. I'm sure that saves them lots of money, oh, yeah. but they will charge the, the end client the same amount they've always been spending. I, I haven't heard from them in years. I, I had a friend that actually owned or was part owner in one of those companies in the Midwest, and he said the biggest problem was that a lot of places didn't allow them, but he, he showed me pictures of homes in their catalog, and it looked just like a regular house. Yeah. It was like, this is stick built, but then we face it with face brick, and so it's like, it's a brick house, but this is like this is built to a better standard than you would get from your local builder. And he said that they're about 25% cheaper. They're really popular in uh, like the Pacific Northwest. That's like all the sites I found were up there. Well, I'm sure that the same thing can be applied to this and that our strawberries and oranges and tomatoes will not get considerably cheaper because of this. U.S. agriculture industry gears up for a futuristic aerial drone swarm farming after an FAA decision permitting them to have drones operate in swarms. Yes, this is incredible. There's a video here of, you know, it's a drone doing crop dusting but we saw farming equipment that was operating at row level doing weeding and inspecting for insects and that is our farming future and that would be incredible can you imagine not having to have harsh insecticides because the robots are out there with lasers killing all of the pests it is better than me having to go out there with a cup of soap and dump all the squash bugs in it dal monsanto says no (laughs) we cannot imagine that and f's in the chat For this hero who took one for the team, literally. Actually, I think it was more than one. More than one, yeah. Robotic police dog shot multiple times and credited with avoiding a potential bloodshed. So. Basically, the dude, they sent the robot in because the dude was squirrely and the dude started shooting. And it was a good thing they sent the robot in. He had already started shooting, actually. He started, he shot at them. Then he escaped to the basement. And they sent three robots mm. into the basement, and he started shooting at them. What a crazy plot twist that it's the dogs. Well, I guess the dogs got shot, but it wasn't by the cops this time. But they also had those anti-bomb robots. He chose to shoot the dog. Maybe he had a little bit of law enforcement in his blood. Mm. <laughs> and uh, now, I didn't quite understand this one. And it seemed like this still uses propellant, right? This is not the torch drive yeah. of science fiction. That makes it a little less exciting. Doodle to reality, world's first nuclear fusion-powered electric propulsion drive. So this has been tested, apparently, and it is feasible to use these in space where you don't need as much radiation shielding. This will superheat the water as it is ejected to make it more uh, efficient. Is that your understanding of it? Yeah. But water is still a propellant that can run out, so this is not forever acceleration in space. Unfortunately, we're not directly converting electricity into an acceleration. Although, you know, we could probably win the Nobel Prize for that if we figure that out. P- Nobel Prize? <laughs> we could own the Earth and the Moon, probably Mars. We're directly and con- space buckies between them all. <laughs> directly converting energy into momentum. This is amazing. 
And one man who knows nothing about that, but has spent his whole life in the shadow of it, is this man. And he is going strong at 92. William Shatner, good science fiction is humanity, moved into a different milieu. Is that how you say that? I think that's right. Pretty close. So he's still out there, and they're doing a documentary about Bill that you can check in on. Another one. <laughs> it's it's fun. Like he's not the writer. He keeps doing life retrospectives, and then he keeps doing amazing. <laughs> yeah, he has another things. one. Yeah, he's still it's alive. Like, oh. He said it here that like they were like, you know, you're 92, mortality, and all that, and he was like, yeah, right now I'm getting out of bed on my own, but I'm struggling. The day I can't do that, I just want to die. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And another hero of Wendell's. I mean, you're more of a Picard guy than Shatner, but you got to throw him some props yeah, for yeah. starting the whole thing, right? But you love this man. <laughs> Students at Vermont College prepare to give White and Nerdy a, a, in a new class on Weird Al. Or they're going to get White and Nerdy. Yeah. Weird Al is brilliant and, you know, obviously all that stuff. But do we really need a college course for him? <laughs> he is uh, he's a unique character. I would think that you'd maybe study him as part of like a larger trend of like parody songs. He does have a fascinating life, though. Interesting guy. And uh, Washington State has some new workers' rights. Now, this is a job that we said we've been told that robots would eventually take. So far, <laughs> haven't been able to. Uh, the ABC News headline is Stripper's Bill of Rights Signed into Law in Washington State. Neat. I don't know. Krista, let me, get, let me take your temperature on this one. Mm-hmm. You get a panic button in the champagne room. You get extra checks for like maybe creepy guys or whatever. You get more protection in terms of independent contractor status and minimal pay and stuff like that. But what you trade is that now they're going to start selling alcohol where they didn't before. So drunk dudes. Mm. I feel like that's more risky than the Well, but isn't there always like... Alcohol and strip clubs, regardless. Maybe not, not in, the in back Washington rooms. State. Oh, that's interesting. So that's now that's going to change. Hmm. I mean, it feels like they should have just had those protections in place in the first place. Well, they say they can't afford them unless you start letting them sell booze to make up the. Yeah, because they give all the money to the strippers, right? They don't just skim well, have, everything off the top. They do have to give more money to the strippers based on this. Actually, it's pretty crazy. They, they explain a lot of the times you're paying. The club. Yeah, that's the way it works for like hair salons too. Yeah, yeah. So that they've put in some safeguards there that you can't like lose a ton of money if you're, I don't know, a bad stripper or something. And uh, this one, I don't even know how to intro this one. Uh, Community is worried about over deeply disturbing behavior from an individual because they're asking for contacts with minors. And this is just like the more. The more you read into this, the more you have questions. Well, here's a picture worth a thousand words. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, wait, what? I hope that was the end of that chat. Uh, but I gotta say, if it's 150 to 200 per poo, <laughs> I, I'd probably do it. I mean, that's a, that's a daily income right Oh, there. no. It would be terrible if someone left a bag of poo on my porch. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it would be terrible if I left a bag of my poo on the porch and tomorrow I found a 200s. <laughs> I would definitely stop doing that. And this one is just a wild one. It, uh, in terms of all the things to worry about intellectual property, who could have ever imagined about this? Firm accused of bootlegging. Adult novelties. And by bootlegging, they mean just cloning. Because who is going to bring the suit against that? Now, you might be thinking, uh, isn't that kind of a uniform thing? Well, now this is actually a company called Bad Dragon. And <laughs> that is definitely flagged. Luckily, that is not something we can Maybe say. we're talking about the new House of the Dragon trailer. They don't know. Oh, yeah. Luckily, uh, the smoking gun has already blurred the images. So we can show you somewhat. This is Spritz, <laughs> the sea dragon. <laughs> and down here we have... I don't remember that. What episode of House of the Dragon is <laughs> <virtual. laughs> So, yeah, Bad Dragon is saying that this other company just totally ripped off their designs. Not cool, I guess. And Larry Fink is the uh, CEO of BlackRock, which is the company that is probably... The single most 
responsible for the housing crisis that we're currently experiencing, other than, you know, like the money printing. And he has an interesting thing to say. BlackRock's Larry Fink sees Social Security crisis as 65 retirement age is, quote unquote, a bit crazy, according to CNBC. Mm. Gotta keep creating value for Larry. It's important. It's really weird, though, because like if you do the math and you take all the money that has been paid into Social Security and the people that will actually be eligible to collect it, those uh, at a modest one and a half percent interest, it's more money than beyond the dreams of avarice. It's weird. I think you're underestimating his dreams. (laughs) And the United Nations, uh, they have proven themselves to be pretty toothless. They came out with that AI legislation, which is non-binding, and then they came out with that big tech legislation that was non-binding. And the anti-slavery stuff in Asia, which was non-binding. And now they've made a very weird decision. The UN picks Saudi Arabia to lead Women's Rights Forum, despite their abysmal record. Yeah, I saw this, and I was just like, is this, is this opposite? <laughs> is this a joke? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not quite April 1st yet. Well, actually, it's already passed for you guys. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it turns out, so they had, um, was it like Singapore or Vietnam or somebody was in there? And they were pressured to end their term early so another Southeast Asian country could step in. But then Saudi Arabia stepped up and were like, no, it's us. And nobody... No, no, sweetheart. Sit down. It's my turn. And then the, the guy was like, does anybody object to that? And nobody did. Nobody was like, I don't know. And high school bathroom dramas. I, I, do you think that maybe these news sites have figured out that these are huge clickbaits? Yeah. Or like people get mad about this. All the grandmas and everybody's on Facebook. Is that because yeah. yeah. week after week we are just getting these poured onto us? At the Times bathroom break stirs controversy at Fresno High. Basically, it's a it's a chess clock for when you enter and exit the bathroom. Seven minutes, tr- including travel time. That's too short when you're dealing with certain things. Well, that's too short in a lot of cases. Yeah. And you think What if I got to find a tampon? What if it's a rolling average? Maybe that would be okay as a rolling average. Oh, we lost the story. Oops, something went wrong. Oh, and it's not a not an easy to guess headline. It's consent. BBC's also bad about that. Their URLs Yahoo can't Yahoo consent. That sucks because this is another story a bathroom story? Yeah. All right. You guys, Can you go back? Can you go backwards? You no. guys vamp a little bit and I'll find it. All right, we'll vamp a little bit. I tried some of these nuts that we were talking about last week. They taste like street corn. They really do. They taste just like corn and it's very upsetting. Because you're eating something that should just be crunchy and salty, but you get the corn taste too. Very odd. Oh, there you go. Found it. Grandfather horrified as school locks bathrooms behind metal cages. So, yeah. Oh, they don't have a picture. Nah, there's a video. But the other article had a picture, but it's literally a metal cage in front of the bathrooms. And when class time starts, the cage locks. And it doesn't unlock until class is over. Sometimes that doesn't line up. That is... It really is just prison, isn't it? Like, <laughs> I mean... You know, they say the, the school-to-prison pipeline? Like, yeah. They really are. Just playing that game. And, uh, Chris, you get hyped for these celestial celestial events. One of our editors is going to go see it. Really? Yeah. Well, She told me about it a while back. I don't know if that's still on, but that's what she told me. She mined it up with her face in the dirt with zip ties around her wrist because <laughs> it's going to be different this year. National Guard to be deployed for solar eclipse 2024. Have, we got the, have they got the advance warning on the new Heaven's Gate cult? What's going on? Yeah, it's also, actually it doesn't perfectly line up because they're going to start another piece of it slightly before that, but that's one of the days when they're going to start the new Large Hadron events. Mm. It's going to be just north of us. Like We're going to get another Mandela effect. mm -hmm. What do you think is going to change this time? Hmm. Was it you who told me about the the Hanes not having the cornucopia? Um, Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. It's Fruit of the Loom. Fruit of the Loom, that's it. Yeah. And uh, the last presidential election, remember we had the giant meteor? (laughs) Oh, yeah. This year we have something similar to that, although this guy took it further and the election committee was not having it. (laughs) 
Feds end presidential campaign of literally anybody <laughs> else, despite meeting the eligibility requirements. So this could legally change his name to literally anybody else. But apparently he didn't give enough information on the forms. Wow. Uh, just used a P.O. box and they're like, no, nah, we, we can't do that. That would have got a non-trivial amount of votes if that would have made it to the ballot. I can't imagine that it would. Be hilarious though. I was, it looks like they're trying to fight really hard to keep all the third-party candidates off the ballot this year. Yeah. Isn't that? I mean, isn't that true every year? Seems like. Yeah, but they're like, re, like yeah. in the past, they were like, oh yeah, we support that. Yeah, you can that. do that, That's, sweetheart. Yeah. yeah. But now they're like, wait a minute, they really hate us. Better take care of it. And how much we as the people hate the government? Don't think that this is flying under their radar. They're aware of it. <laughs> A secret, quote-unquote, Royal Canadian Mounted Police report warns that Canadians might revolt once they realize exactly how broke they actually are. You don't want to see what the Canadians do when they revolt. It's nothing good. <laughs> well, we saw with the trucker protests, right? Uh, but then like, we saw what happens to them. Do you realize that we're low on the maple syrup reserves and we did not have a good winter for maple syrup production? <laughs> yeah, it did get warm really fast. One of the big things they point out is that at least in the next five years, things are going to get way worse. And they suspect that young Canadians will at some point realize they will never own land. <laughs> they might get a little angsty when that happens. There are some other interesting subheadlines in this uh, report that were completely redacted. So I imagine those are even spicier. We might get a summer of discontent in the Great White North. And I always advocate don't drink the municipal water. I'm vindicated. Body found in New York water supply reservoir went unnoticed for a month. Do you know what the fish do in that reservoir? <laughs> they hold fins. No. Oh. This dude, for whatever reason, climbed into the reservoir and fell into it and drowned. And oh. nobody knows why he was there. He climbed that fence. I don't know. But he was there for a long time. Ugh. Hmm. Not great. Corpse water. That's probably true. I bet every drop of water you've ever drank has had a corpse in it at some point. Somebody quote me on that. Well, the fact that the water recycles since the beginning of the earth. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. When we learned about the water cycle, I remember my teacher, like, this is still vividly in my head. She was like, you, you could have drank George Washington's bath water. And I was like. Or his piss. <laughs> yeah. I was like in fourth grade. And, it was distressing. This was a kind of a clickbait headline. They haven't actually proven this yet. Moonshine Cave, long rumored to be under historic NASCAR Speedway, possibly found in North Carolina. So they had some foundational damage here and they've had to pull up some stuff and there's something weird going on down there. <laughs> <laughs> Just cover that right back up. I don't need to know what's going on under there. Uh, I've never heard of that track before, but I'm not mm -hmm. a big NASCAR guy. And it's time for April Fools, right? We all have already experienced it by the time you watch this. But for us, it's pre-April 1st. So that day, you have to, of course, ignore everything that you see. 7-Eleven <laughs> announces hot dog flavored sparkling water. I, I would try it. You'd try it? Yeah, I would try it. Walmart was literally selling turkey and dressing flavored drinks. Like the whole, you know, meal. The whole Thanksgiving meal in drink form. You don't want to drink your calories like that. And shrinkflation, I think we've all seen it. Yes. It's real, but the companies will go a long way to hide it and to try and deny it when it happens. I'm sorry. We keep hitting the mics. Also, Wendell, you know, your newfound love of beans. Yeah. What if all of a sudden you lost 1% of your total beans? That would suck. Well, it's here. Major brands deny shrinkflation as Heinz says that reducing the number of beans in a tin doesn't count. Somebody get John Kerry on the phone right now and let's tell him how disingenuous that is and just, come on, don't insult us. I don't think he's involved anymore. <laughs> talking about his, his wife yeah. being the, the Heinz. Yeah. So the iconic blue bean can has gone from 51% beans and 49% tomato slurry to 50-50. nothing think, sacred. What do you think they save per can? Enough for it to stave off the yeah. the uh, slight reduction in profits another quarter. Well, all of these kinds of things could maybe motivate you in a radical way to fight against the giant companies and the corporations and become radicalized. 
which seems to be what's happening in Japan, but they've got a weird target. Niche Gamer reports that Japanese, the Japanese Communist Party is encouraging members to report fan service manga to the United Nations. <laughs> the United Nations is like, we're busy. <laughs> I don't think that there's ever been a more insane utterance in the history of civilization. You know, they might report this to the United Nations, and now it's Saudi Arabia who's looking at it, and they're like, you're right! <laughs> Let's start canceling all of this. Yeah. What I, a weird... That's... It's so odd. It's so odd on so many levels. It's so weird that once the communists get a little bit of power, they start trying to censor everything. <laughs> Engagement challenge. Someone should uh, explain that to us in the comments. I don't get it. Now, Krista, what if you're hiking next week and you encounter a demon? What are you going to do? We'll probably die. <laughs> well, I was thinking the step before that. <laughs> you're just going to like just sit down and be All like, right. finally. <laughs> Rare disorder causes men to see people's faces as, quote, demonic. And there's, a, there's an artist's rendition of like how they, okay. These remind me, like some of these renderings remind me a little bit of like kabuki masks. Look how this head flattened out in the back. You think that's part the other, of it? The or? other one didn't. Yeah, that's yeah it just, might have just been maybe they were cutting, like maybe she had a pair and a ponytail. It's just bad Photoshop. Yeah. But they claim that this guy's not alone, and there's been over 100 cases of this, which is PMO. I can't remember what that stands for. But yeah, apparently, and apparently it can... It, oh, there you go, Wendell. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read that. Yeah, I don't know. It's That's like so small. Lizard personophobia. Pro, prosopo, prosopo metamorphosia? Mo, metamorphopsia. Wow. So could this be a reasonable explanation for lizard people? Or could this be lizard people hiding among us mm. during an election year? They're Only worried, I can see them. They're worried about getting caught. And it, sometimes it wears off and sometimes it lasts a year. Wow. And over in Japan, aside from their salacious manga that they have to worry about, they also have a huge demographic crisis. <laughs> Japan nappy maker shifts from babies to adults. Because some days it does be like that. Japan had 758,000 births in 2023. That is a low number for them. I don't blame the youth who are not having children. How can you blame them? And one thing that you must be careful of when you're getting beauty work, Krista, if you ever like, you know, I need a mani-pedi or I want to get like a skin peel or whatever, check to make sure that your esthetician is not a vampire. New HIV cases linked to shuttered New Mexico salon that offered vampire facials. Do you know what a vampire facial is? I have no idea. It's insane. You draw blood. First of all, I don't want my salon workers drawing my blood. No, you have to have like a, a healthcare accreditation to do that, right? It's Well, it's like a pretty basic nursing thing. I right? guess, yeah. Phlebotomist. But, so they pull your blood. They run it through one of those, I guess, uh, centrifuge to separate the platelets and get like the good blood out of it. Then they take that. And then they take micro punctures to open up your face. And then they smear the blood on your face. What does that do? It gives you HIV. <laughs> ah, yes. well, yeah. Does that mean they're not giving you your blood? Because that's even <laughs> that's weirder. That's a good point. Yeah. I think it's probably just the equipment, right? I guess, yeah. Probably cross-contaminated, wasn't cleaned. It's still weird. I don't, I don't get it. Well, out there in California, they got all these new programs to try to stop the violence. And one of the ways that they're doing it is by giving money and certificates to people who will agree to go through their non-violence programs. But do they work? <laughs> Deputies arrest Fresno Urban Peace graduate after finding him with 25 guns. Nice. I think that this guy is going to get more uh, less time than Sam Bankman free. <laughs> Almost guaranteed. He had been uh, responsible for a string of burglaries before his class time and then immediately afterwards. Good job, Fresno. And here's a callback to, we covered this story, and we all had a lot of questions, and my questions have still not been answered as to why this would be a thing. <laughs> Street View driver cops to felony for police chase. So, apparently he just wouldn't pull over. The police were trying to pull him over. And... <laughs> I have to get these photos. <laughs> well, he, first of all, he got called in by other drivers, where they're like, there's a Street View car doing 120. And They're not going to get good photos at that speed. That's true. And then they caught him, and he was, in fact, doing that. And he ran and drove his car into a pond. 
Here's the crazy thing about it, though. It's one of those, like, subcontractor Google things where it's like, oh, that's not a Google employee. He already had a ton of reckless driving offenses before Google hired him to be a Street View driver. (laughs) Sometimes those are not well-vetted jobs. Sometimes. (laughs) Apparently not at all. And here's the maybe the craziest story of the week. I didn't put it at the end because it's kind of horrible and sad, but it's it's just kind of a reflection of where society is right now. Man arrested after allegedly taking and eating a leg of a pedestrian hit by a train in Wasco. Where's Wasco? Like, there's so many things that I have questions about. I mean, clearly this is another piece of evidence that there is something elevating us as a species, and some of us are more elevated than others, I guess. Well, I think... Pharmacology could also be a <laughs> recreational pharmacology. Uh. Side effects of recreational pharmacology. Okay. Oh, here's my story that yeah, I missed. There it this is. It's literally the, like 30 stories later. I regret saying that it was a good news that those people had their house raided of bad AirPods. I was actually talking about this lady. Grandmother awarded nearly $4 million over SWAT, a SWAT raid predicated on a faulty Find My iPhone ping. They didn't find the iPhone. She was the only resident that took her outside. They wrecked her house. They wrecked her garage. Like, she even offered, it's like, I'll just unlock the garage for you. Like, the garage is unlocked. Like, you don't have to. Nah, they just tore the garage door down. Which you should never do, by the way. I don't remember when that event happened, but the story was like a week or two ago, right? So that means as soon as those headlines hit, the police were like, settle. (laughs) (laughs) We don't want any more press for that. Whatever she needs. So, and the, it turns out the phone ping might have even been from a neighboring house, not even her house. Yeah, so. they confirmed that uh, the phone was not in her house. It was like in a car nearby. Yeah. So. And the crime waves continue to rack this poor country, and it seems like our criminals are getting younger and younger. Parents of boy bank robbers uh, dubbed as little rascals turn them in, the HCSO says. So this, these are three kids, 16, 11, and 12, that uh, made a threatening note to rob a bank. Was that the right sequence of events? I think it might have had a gun. Well, they didn't charge them with violence. It was just they're on probation now. They didn't release their names. The 16-year-old is not going to be tried as an adult for some reason. This, why is the 16-year-old hanging out with a 12-year-old and 11-year-old? They didn't figure that out. They thought that... It was probably an adult who would put them up to it because Mm -hmm. the punishment would not be as severe for them, but they haven't proven anything yet. And I disagree with what Harvard has done here. I think this is part of history. This was let it happen. Harvard University removes human skin binding from book. And ate it. (laughs) Because of sensitivity. So this is a book that apparently belonged to a doctor and he used a, a woman that had died of natural causes as a... You know, as you do. Yeah, you don't want to let any part of that go to waste. Sure, that's what she would have wanted. Right before she died, she said, make me into a book. I mean, it's weird, but it is like a historical record, right? You don't want to destroy something like that. I wouldn't hate if you used my skin after I was dead to put on a book cover, but it would the book would matter a lot. Like yeah. if, you, if you put it on Harry Potter, I would <laughs> I would haunt you if that was at all possible. <laughs> And more and more, our youth is growing up, and they're growing up in the age of OnlyFans and social media and everything. And then they start teaching, and all of their past and all of that comes to haunt them. Teacher alleges she was fired from Michigan school because of her rap career. (laughs) This is Honey Drizzle. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't say what they found objectionable in her music. I didn't look her up either. I got the impression it might have been sexualized, maybe. Mm -hmm. Probably. Maybe some swear words. But she's out, and she's going to sue him. And Krista, as an art student, I figured this would really resonate with you. Yeah, it makes me mad. Parents, go ahead. Parents file 1.5 million lawsuit after Quebec teacher accused of selling students' artwork online. My mom just got back from the doctor, so it's just like, meh. They're quite pricey. I mean, if she was doing this to raise money for students in her class, okay. But it but, seems like she was maybe pocketing the money, which is maybe... Yeah, mm-hmm. typically what would happen with, like, a student art show, you would either, like, you'd either sell it and, like, the student gets the money. Right. Or it's something that's, like, pulled together to, like, buy supplies for the, the classroom or something. This was going into her bank account. Yeah, that would make me furious. And also, Chris, there's another thing you're going to have to think about next week. 
But you also you often will malign and argue that one bear is better than the other in terms of brown versus black. Right. Maybe this vindicates you. Brown bear identified with biometric drone killed 10 days after it attacked five people in a Slovak village. Now, biometric drone, do you think that's visual recognition? Because how would they know what to compare? I didn't understand that part. What if I was just wearing a fuzzy like hoodie and I was running around on all fours? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how a biometric drone targets an individual bear. This couldn't just be a natural bear. It has to be some sort of machination of man. The video was crazy because it was just like going after people. It was maddened. It was probably wanted food. It had made the a fed bear is a dead bear. It made that equivalent. Uh, it is dead now. Uh, the Slovak people are saying that there's like an EU thing where it's like, oh, we have to, you know, bring the bears back. It's it's diversity in the nature, and they're like, the bears are killing us. Can we please not have? They probably don't really have wild places. I think in Europe, in the same way that we do here, it's coming right for us. Slovakia's probably got something decent, but I mean, if you're a bear and there's like a juicy little town there with all sorts of garbage cans and stuff. Yeah, and they don't. They haven't locked them down. We had a lot of bears growing up, and they would get aggressive from time to time. Yeah, that's they usually I, at that point they either have to relocate them, or if they keep coming back and they keep tearing into stuff and like getting in people's houses, they eventually get put down. I think, I think my grandpa shot one with the, the salt round in a shotgun, and it stayed away for a couple of years. Yeah. Well, don't do that to cats because people are constantly misidentifying cats as more of a threat than they actually are. Large cat spotted in South, uh, what, San Francisco? Was not a mountain lion, San please Fran. say. It was just a cat. I mean, yeah. it doesn't even look like a big cat. It doesn't, not even, like, sometimes I can, I'm like, I can kind of see where you yeah. might get confused, but that just looks like a cat. Maybe, maybe a wild cat, like the little tiny wild cats we maybe, have out here. Maybe, but a mountain lion doesn't have that coloration, does it? No, it? usually, and they're much bigger. It could have been a young one, but even then, I look at that, that's just a basic That's cat. a cat, yeah. And I could imagine so easily little Rue getting into this situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's pretty dumb. Yeah. Firefighters in New Jersey come to the rescue of a yellow laboratory retriever stuck in a spare tire. She has become weirdly interested in Cricket's litter box. We've had to start oh. shutting the door. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say that the, the snack treats. <laughs> yeah, she hasn't gotten into it, but we'll like see her creeping over there like, Rue, no. <laughs> no, no, uh-uh. You're not getting in there. She doesn't know. She I, uh, wants it though. My cats usually don't get on the counter. I've kind of beaten that, unless I'm not there and I'm not sure. But like, I don't see the evidence of it. But yesterday, I made some chicken wings up there, and I gave them a little bits of chicken wings when I was done because you know there's always like detritus left over. And today they got up and got the bones. Yeah, <laughs> cricket. We're working with him a lot. He gets sprayed almost daily. <laughs> I think chicken wings are always going to be more powerful than fear of the spray. Yeah. <laughs> This poor guy, they oiled him up, and then they tried plastic wrap. They couldn't do it. Ultimately, plasma cutter. Mm. I had to plasma oh, cutter. Oh, that's probably so scary for the little puppy. But he's free. Probably looking to do it again. <laughs> oh, I'll do it again. <laughs> and the question of how many cats is too many, I think we have a definitive answer. Charity steps in to rehome 300 cats from overwhelmed man in Canada. Imagine the smell. You didn't think of the smell. He said there were times when he didn't eat because the cat litter and kibble cost was so extreme that he didn't have any money left for himself. But they said that all of these, you know how usually these hoarder situation, the cats are just like feral and sick and everything. All these cats were healthy and completely socialized. <laughs> like the, so his whole life was probably just yeah. taking care of those cats. The rescues came in and they're like, I can't believe that none of these cats are running away from us. They're getting in our lap and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But it was the, the breeding that got him. Ugh. He had cats that were still valid breeding pairs, uh, and it just overwhelmed him over time. That's problematic. Yeah. It's unfortunate. And this one, I only had to look at it for a moment to know this would be the ending story. This week. <sighs> Bedfordshire, black bears at Woburn Safari Park ride on swan pedalos. Pedalos? I'm this just, is such an. This feels aggressively British. Like, I'm gonna start using pedalos as a an insult for people. <laughs> that guy's a pedalo. Yeah, they they uh, look at him. So what happened here? There, this lake. They had just just insane rains, and it created this temporary pond in their area. And they were refitting the pedals on this boat, and they're like, you know what? Let's just let the see what the bears will do. And sure enough, <laughs> the bears are like, look, this yeah, is I'll a get in there they for me. It. Also, bears, Gosh, cute. they actually can swim. 
But they don't need to. Because they've they got, got the, the boat. Swan. Yeah. <laughs> they can't pedal very well. I like that all of them are trying to get into it, too. <laughs> How adorable. That adorable so little murderers. <laughs> Just like my cats. Just oh. if they are very hungry, which they probably are because it's springtime and they're waking up. Yeah, but these guys are in it, some sort of enclosure. So they're, in a, they're in a swan boat. <laughs> As you do. All right, chat. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week with another episode. Goodbye.